Moving over to Premiere from Media Composer takes a little bit of getting used to how Premiere works with files. I'm going to take a little bit of time, kind of walk you through the creation of a new project. Also talk a little bit about using multiple projects in something called a production. Um, and then we're going to get really into how Premiere links to media, how to relink clips if you ever need to, what Premiere is looking for. and where you can store your media. There are some ways of making sure that as you're importing things, the media is getting copied to a central location. We're gonna kind of dive into that a little bit. So to get started, I'm over here in Adobe Premiere. I've got the uh, startup screen going right now. Now, the first thing to realize is when you're importing clips, when you're creating project files in Premiere, um, just know that a Premiere project file doesn't have a frame rate, doesn't have any type of resolution associated with it. It's format agnostic. Where we do the sort of locking down frame rate and resolution or raster size is on a sequence by sequence basis. But your project can contain whatever you want uh, inside of it. Uh, there are some people that are editing 8K natively from red cameras in Premiere. You can do that. Uh, other people are working with a daily's house and they're bringing in footage that's maybe 1920 by 1080 or even oddball resolutions like 1920 by 858. It really doesn't matter. Premiere leaves that door wide open. Uh, and this is great if you suddenly have to transition in, into doing something for like social media where you need to work in a non-standard aspect ratio for delivery on Instagram or uh, other social platforms. So to get started, let me go ahead and make a new project in Premiere. And when I'm making a new project, Premiere automatically jumps into this import screen. Um, and you can see up the top, this is the location of my new project. Uh, I can click here to choose a specific location for that project. Uh, and at this point, I can choose to put it wherever I need to put it. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and say, let's put this on an external drive and I'll create a new folder for my Premiere project and we'll call this one files. And I'll go ahead and click create. Um, so this is going to be the new location of my project. And now at this point, I can give the project a name. I'm going to just call it Carl. Just for the sake of doing this, you can use numbers, letters, whatever you need. Um, and at this point, if I just want to create a blank project, I don't need to go any further. I can make sure that these options over here on the side are all turned off and I can just click create and it will create this project for me. However, if I want to go ahead and import some clips at the same time, I can do that directly from this one stop shop screen. So from here, maybe I want to bring in some dailies. I'll go into a folder here called media and Premiere provides some different options for looking at my media. Um, I can use a grid view if I want. This actually features the ability to play clips before I've imported them. You should also note that there's some options under this uh, it's like a tri upside down triangle with a little line um, coming off of it. These uh, different buttons here provide some different viewing options, including the fact that Premiere will recognize certain types of card structures and just kind of cut through some of the extra folders and subfolders that you might have to work with. Uh, if you want to edit natively with red cameras, this import screen will actually go through and usually each clip from a red camera is stored in a separate folder. This will just show you all of those clips without having to go through and show you all the different folders here. Right now we're just looking at files. If you ever need to move away from this, if Premiere has accidentally recognized a folder as a DPX sequence or something strange like that, just feel free to click on this and go up to files. That'll make it match more like what you see in your operating system. I'm just gonna go ahead and select a few clips here. We'll grab this clip, we'll grab this clip, we'll grab this clip. And you can see as I'm doing this, it's kind of building out a little, uh, a little series of thumbnails down here at the bottom. Um, if I want to, there are some options over on the side here for 
uh, what I want to do with these clips as I'm ingesting them. Premiere has the ability to copy clips and I can turn this functionality on and I can choose exactly where I want these clips copied to. But here's the thing, this is optional in Premiere. Um, the basic default way that Premiere likes to work is just linking two files. Um, it's the bread and butter of Premiere. It's the native way Premiere works. There isn't like a consolidate and transcode step that you have to worry about at another point to unlock extra features. Uh, Premiere really, really is comfortable with just editing the media wherever the media happens to live. Uh, this is great if you have an assistant editor who's automatically taking care of dailies for you. Um, you need to import some additional files. If you need to, if you want to make sure you're working in a shared environment, you want to make sure that your media is being copied to like a central server, by all means, use this copy media function here and you can choose exactly where you want uh, this to put your media. But, uh, you know, again, just remember it's optional. Premiere will edit from wherever. You can even edit off of a memory card. I don't recommend that except for like there are some news editors out there that like to work very fast. They're trying to turn a story around and get it on the air as quickly as possible. Most times you want to make sure your footage is backed up, have multiple copies of it and so on and so on. You can do it is all I'm saying. OK, so in this case, I've gone ahead and said copy the media into my project. Um, I can also put the media into a new folder. And so this means that the clips, when they come into my project, are going to be found inside of a folder called poetry that I can then work with. Premiere is also very sequence oriented. A lot of people like to use string outs in Premiere. If you're an editor that prefers that, you can also put these clips onto a new sequence. And again, I'll just come in here, we'll delete this sequence 01 and we'll call this poetry string out. Okay. Lastly, there is the ability to actually create an automatic transcription. I'm not going to cover that in here today, but just know that this is part of the power of Premiere is that we have this ability to automatically convert spoken word into a searchable text document that you can open up in Premiere in a panel called the text panel. Uh, not going to do that here today, but there's a lot of videos online about it. It's a new feature in Premiere as of version 23.4, I want to say. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and hit create. And what has just happened here, Premiere has created a new project file and it's gone ahead and created a new sequence. In my project tab, you can see here where it says, Carl, this is my project showing up here. Um, I'm not going to go into the user interface. I've got another video that uh, will cover some basics of setting up the user experience in the user interface. Uh, the one thing I will do is come in here and choose the editing workspace. And just to make sure it looks exactly the same way you see it, I'm going to go ahead and use this option here called Reset to Saved Layout. So that that way, everything is kind of lined up and everything looks the way we expect it to look. Okay, um, what have I just done in this case? Well, a couple of things are going on. First off, um, I've created a new project. So if I click on the little hamburger menu for my project and I say Reveal Project in Finder, what has actually happened is on that external drive uh, under the, the Pro Blade here, in fact, let me change this from a list view to a column view. For those of you who are Mac users, you'll probably uh, recognize this. So I'm on the drive Pro Blade. Um, I've got a folder that I've created called Files, and this represents my project. This is the project file that I'm currently working on. Um, it's the one that I currently have open. You'll notice that I have, there's another little file here called a PR lock file. I do have a preference turned on to enable project locking. Uh, that just prevents other editors from opening up my project when I'm actively working on it so that nobody loses any changes that they're making. Um, you'll also notice that there's a bunch of clips now in this folder. You may, if you try this for the first time, see Adobe Media Encoder actually fire up. 
because Media Encoder is the active tool, and I'll bring it over here from my other monitor display, Media Encoder is the tool that will actually do this copying action. So when you tell Premiere to copy to a new location, a copy of your clips ends up in the new location. I just specified this files folder here with my project. Uh, same as project is the way I had this set up. So you can see that now a copy of all of those clips has now been copied into this folder as well. You can put your media in a separate location. It doesn't have to be same as project. Um, you know, if you're working in something called a production, you generally want to keep your media outside of the production folder. It can live adjacent to the production folder, but you want to keep your uh, production and projects separate from where your media is stored. In this case, I'm just using a single project. Now, if none of that made any sense, please check out the playlist that I have here about productions, because productions are a very, very important method. Uh, if you're doing any type of um, long form documentary, any type of uh, episodic where you have a lot of media and you want to have a more avid style way of kind of organizing things into separate bins. Um, I highly, highly recommend checking out this playlist. Okay, so we've got a project file, we've got our clips. Each of these clips may have a frame rate and a resolution. The easiest way to make another sequence, this sequence has actually inherited the values it saw from these clips. And if I wanna see what exactly is going on in this uh, sequence, I can always come up to sequence, sequence settings. And I can see here that these clips are on a 23976 timeline at 1920 by 1080. Um, square pixels, and my working color space is for broadcast at 709. Okay, so Premiere does that automatically. If I needed to create a different sequence, I could create one manually by clicking on the new item button and going to new sequence, or I could take a different format clip, import it, and then just drag and drop that onto this new sequence button or new item button, and it'll make a new sequence based on that particular clip. Uh, multiple ways of dealing with it, but just know that your uh, frame rate, your time base, uh, your resolution or raster size are based on the sequence. And any other clips that I throw into this sequence are going to be conformed. They're going to be scaled. Uh, the frame rate's going to be adjusted using something like motion blending uh, to match that particular output. So it's not uncommon to set your resolution of your sequence to what your deliverable is going to be, what your output is going to be working in. Um, and that way you can have clips kind of scale up and scale down. You can use uh, the scale value and the effect controls to kind of zoom in, reposition shots, and so on and so forth. Um, but just know that that's a fundamental difference. Now, the other thing is, you know, I can also bring in clips from virtually any location. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and reveal this in the finder here just to bring up a finder window. And I'm going to go back to my uh, folder here that I have of dailies. And I'll go ahead and go into my media folder. Here's some additional clips. We'll go down here to some of these clips in the bottom. There's nothing preventing me from just grabbing a set of clips and dragging them and dropping them into the project. Perfectly valid way of importing some shots as well if you need to. You can also double click on this empty location down here and go to uh, a, a finder window, an operating system window. Let's see, I'll go into this folder and I'll go into some of my media here. Here's some stuff from scene one of this movie. And again, you know, I could do a group selection and say import. And you can see all of these clips have now been imported as well. It's kind of best to think of a Premiere project almost like a bin because that's really the way it's designed. It contains sequences. It contains uh, your media or clips. And these clips are all referencing a spot on a drive someplace. So at no point do these clips get embedded into the project. They're always uh, linking to wherever the media happens to live.
If you ever need to throw clips offline for some reason, you need, you're going to relink them to a different piece of media on disk, you can do a group selection of clips. And we use a lot of right clicking in Premiere so I can right click on these clips and say make offline. And now those clips are offline in the project. If I need to link to clips, I can select them and say link media. And at this point, a panel will pop up on the screen that looks something like this. And from here, I can click the locate button and I can come in and find the location. Now, again, this is pointing to where that clip currently lives. It's currently uh, in the files folder here. So now if I want to uh, relink to it, I can navigate to that location. And this little box down here, display only exact file name matches. What this does is it'll take a directory that maybe has dozens and dozens of different clips in it, and it will uh, filter everything out to just the files that have the exact same file name. So I'll go ahead and click on that, and you can see it automatically found the rest of the clips and brought everything online for me. Now, if you're ever in a situation where you're trying to make a project more portable, um, where you want to have the media and the project files in one location, go ahead and click on the file menu, go to Project Manager, and Project Manager can manage your files on a sequence by sequence basis. I only have one sequence in here, so it's basically saying, do you want to use that sequence? Now, the important thing to note here there are some there are two different options here. One is to collect files and copy to new location. The other one is consolidate and transcode. If I choose consolidate and transcode, I need to convert these files to some common format. There's a lot of formats where you can't trim a file in Premiere. A uh, good example of this is like Red R3D Media. Uh, that is just beyond the capabilities of Premiere. It's a raw format. Um, so in situations like that, I would typically collect the files if I wanted to stay in the original file format. And this is the most uh, ideal option here. Consolidating and transcoding always means that it's converting to a common image, a common file format type. And you can see some favorites in here like DNX HR, uh, as well as MXF OP1A and QuickTime. So I can select one of these, I can choose between different formats, and these are all designed to give me decent mezzanine codecs, including ProRes. Uh, if I choose QuickTime here, I can go ahead and choose and have everything transcoded into something like ProRes 422 or 4444. Another important thing to note is over here on the side where it says exclude unused clips. When I use the project manager, this will actually uh, include everything that's in the entire project unless I check this box. If I check this box, it's just going to give me the clips from the sequences that are selected up at the top here. Um, and you can also see when I do consolidate and transcode, this will include handles. Um, so I can set a number of frames that I want to have as handles. These other options, I don't recommend messing with it. You know, Premiere does have some older options in here that can actually rename your clips on disk to match. Not recommended for any type of workflow where you're going to be conforming to high res later on. Um, you always want to try and preserve file names if at all possible. Once this is all done, I can browse to a uh, location and I can go ahead and click the OK button and this will go through and kick off that process. Again, collecting files is just going to give me the entire clips. Uh, those uh, files are going to be copied whole to the new location. Uh, Consolidate and transcode does give me an option for trimming files down, but at the cost of having to convert them to a mezzanine codec at that point. All right, so this is just a little basic uh, understanding of how Premiere kind of works with files. I know for some of you, this is probably very, very basic, uh, but for others, if you're new to Premiere, I wanted to make sure and walk through these basic steps because this is a little bit different from the way Media Composer likes to put everything in the Avid Media Files folder and work from there. 
Premiere does give you a lot more flexibility when it comes to what type of storage you're working on, where you're cutting from, and have that ability to kind of, you know, unlink clips and relink to a different resolution. Not uncommon to actually do the conform in Premiere where you eventually relink to something like an R3D file or an Airy Raw clip uh, in the timeline and actually start editing at uh, an online uh, resolution of the original camera negative. So just something to be aware there. All right, please uh, like and subscribe if you like this video and thanks for watching.